A third really common question that probably is in the mind of every uh, dissertation student would be how much do I need to do? How much data do I need? How many interviews do I need to, to conduct? How uh, many questionnaires do I need to send out? How many responses do I need? The answer to these depends on two very ki different kind of logics. When you're doing survey research, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make inferences about a bigger population based on your sample, based on your responses. So the kinds of questions you're asking there are how confident can I be that what I have found out about my sample applies um, to the general population. It's a logic of statistical inference. When you're doing interviews you have a different logic um, in play. Essentially what you need to be able to do is to demonstrate that you have enough of an evidential basis for somebody to believe your claims about what's going on in this context. You can't, with interviews, speak to enough people to, to make it representative of the population. And more than this, qualitative data can't be reduced to numbers in the same way that quantitative data can. Every interviewee's account will be in some uh, respect, not uh, important respect perhaps, uh, different and unique. So there's a different logic at work. The first in surveys is a logic of inference based on statistics. The second one is a um, kind of internal logic about what kind of claims can you make about the people whom you've spoken to. Thinking about this a little more um, pragmatically or a bit more in concrete terms, I'd say that possibly you know, a rule of thumb, if you're speaking to about a dozen to 15 interviewees and you've spoken to them for 20 to, well, half an hour, and um, you've recorded those interviews and partially transcribed, i.e. written up notes as to what people have said, um, you know, that, that would be kind of in line with what I'd expect in broad, very broad and general terms. It's difficult to be more precise than this because some questions that you might want to address, you might have fewer than 15 people who could be um, informative about that. You would have you know, fewer key informants, in which case maybe what is more sensible to do rather than seek, for, uh, seek a dozen people out, it would be to speak to a smaller number in more depth and more detail and so on. And it partly depends as well. I mentioned that there's a multiplicity of um, perspectives on qualitative research. Um, it partly depends on the way in which you're analysing and treating that research. If you're looking at people's stories in all their richness and complexity, then you know one person's um, historical bi or biography would contain a great deal of um, you know depth and richness uh, and detail in terms of material. Um, if you are uh, just doing it in a way a kind of questionnaire but you're asking people you know a census type uh, of interview rather than a kind of narrative type of interview then you're getting closer to the logic of the statistical inference um, that informs survey research so you might need to do more um, you would need to do more interviews because you wouldn't have the same depth of detail in terms of um, surveys, I mean, w one thing about survey research is it is a risky um, endeavour. It's a kind of one-shot um, strategy. Once your surveys are out there, you can't do anything to um, improve the response rate, and you can't ask questions further down the line of the last people to fill the questionnaire in. Um, you know, because they're all going to come back at the same time, and you need a consistent method. Otherwise, you haven't got the same sample really. Um, if you're asking different questions uh, of, of different groups of respondents. With interviews, however, you can go back and you can um, ask uh, people you know, multiple times. So that might be th something to factor in when you're thinking about how many interviews is enough. Sometimes people talk about saturation, um, which is to say a, r a, a rule of thumb for stopping the number of interviews that you've done is you get the same themes coming up um, but it, it can be difficult to reach that point certainly with the numbers I've described you know, which might be typical for a, a dissertation of say a dozen interviews you might get different things each time um, 
so it's difficult to provide a, a definitive answer as to how many is it is enough and obviously you get guidance from your supervisor about that the main thing is to think about the different basis for inference it's a mistake to say that you don't generalize in qualitative research um, you do you you try and say things that that are um, of wider application um, you just use a different logic for doing that you do you, you communicate thoroughness and rigor and um, you know you're not doing it on the basis of statistical inference but you're still trying to um, generalize so those are some considerations about interview research and survey research and how much is enough and, and so on.